Okay, so we have made it to Skipper Canteen, otherwise known as Jungle Cruise Navigation Company Limited I don't think Skipper Canteen. Really? I think it's Jungle Navigation Company LTD Skipper Canteen. I will stop. Now. That's a mouthful. We call it Skipper Canteen here. Hey everyone, welcome back. Dan and Leslie here for another Disney dining review. Spoiler alert, my ears <laughs> are giving away where we are headed. So we are going to Jungle Navigation Company, Skipper Canteen, is that the whole word? Jungle uh, Navi... It's such a... It's Skipper Canteen in Magic yeah. Kingdom. <laughs> um, this is really long, the official word. Um, Skipper Canteen, we've never actually eaten there. Jungle Navigation Company LTD Skipper Canteen. Forgot the LTD. All right, so <laughs> Skipper Canteen in Adventureland of Magic Kingdom. We yep. have never eaten there before. I'm excited about this because it is, um, number one, not your average fare. No, it's very unique and different, so I'm, I'm intrigued. And number two, the skippers are the actual waiters and the wait staff, so. Yeah. So I, I love the Jungle Cruise. I'm the one, if you've ever been on it, that's like cackling at the every joke that they make. And everyone else is like, huh. <laughs> this is different. So um, first thing going in, Magic Kingdom never used to serve any sort of alcoholic beverage. Now they serve beer and wine. So there are some cocktails and beers there, but they are like wine, like sangria and like a beer cocktail. Yeah. So it's not like a true full bar. So I'm not sure how the drink situation is going to work. We'll see. Um, and then I can't even pronounce the stuff on the menu. <laughs> Some of it I can't. <laughs> so I'm not, well, okay, what do okay. we got? So we have for appetizers, we've got varied um, choices like veranda fried rice, jungle green salad, I can say all of that, false family falafel. Go to that one. Uh, Oring Oko Ida's chachapas. It's like, I guess, uh, corn pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then there's like a short rib, a grilled steak. I mean, they have really punny names <laughs> to them, uh, like a chicken. Anyway, so lots of really interesting options. That Thai noodle looks really that intriguing. Good. Yeah. Um, and then the desserts look amazing. Yeah, so for sure. uh, I'm pretty excited. I, I, I don't know what I want them to recommend because all of them look delicious. There's a coconut bar with a pineapple basil compote and vanilla cr uh, cream, a Congo lime delight, or a Congolouche, which this one is an African inspired chocolate cake with caramelized bananas served with cashew caramel ice cream topped with coffee dust. Interesting. Mm. Before we get going, if you need help planning your next magical vacation, please reach out to us. You can find us over at Fantastical Vacations. Um, there is a quote request button, or you can go to the Meet Our Agents tab, and you can see all of the wonderful Fantastical Vacations agents that we have working there. It is free to you. You'll pay the exact same amount whether you book with one of our agents yep. or book with Disney directly. Uh, so check that out. And if you want to follow along with all of our crazy adventures and uh, like a little deeper dive than what you get in these videos, then follow our podcast. We record those and publish them on Sundays and Wednesdays, and we talk about everything Disney, Universal, theme parks, travel, moving to Orlando, everything you could want to talk about. All right, are you ready? I'm ready, let's do this. Let's go. Here and I said yes, and he goes, well, let me show you some highlights. There's some there. 
There's some more there, and there's some back there. So appetizers, we actually got two. Oh, first we got the drink. Yes. We got? So we got an Adventureland Colada, which is basically like a, it's a non-alcoholic pina colada, but um, it's made with made Dole with Dole Whip, which mm -hmm. the coconut Dole Whip is like my favorite, so. I mean, I feel like that's their best drink here. So who cares if it's not alcoholic, right? That's right, that's right. So we're gonna share that. Yeah. Um, we did get two appetizers. There's a secret menu appetizer here called the Pau de Queijo. Kind of like, I don't know, it's cheese bread that you dip in something. Poblano cream cheese and chimichurri sauce on the side. The on menu appetizer that we got are these little corn cakes. Uh-huh, um, it's called cachapas. And she said it was impossible to, to pick between both of them, so... So we didn't. We got them both. That's really good. Is that? Oh. The straws are huge. Mm. That may be the best expression of pineapple Dole Whip I've ever had. Get your own, man. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, this smells incredible. Yes, so, we've got the Pau de Queijo. <laughs> I'm so glad you took it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say that. And then we have the cachapas, which are like the corn cakes with the pork on top. Yeah. So it did take a little while for um, it to be to be brought out to us. I think we ordered it about 30 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, she joked that they were having trouble catching the pig. I don't really know what the real issue was, but. Um, <laughs> We'll see how long the actual meal takes. Yeah. Um, we are gonna share the noodles, the Thai noodles. She said if you if you wanted something with a little bit of kick, get the noodles. So I'm not a huge fan of this style of cheese bread normally. I actually like this one. See, I love this kind of bread. So it's almost like there is soft, like warm cheese wrapped in dough. It's like, it's not cheese bread, it's like bread on the outside of cheese. Let's try it. Mm. Right? So that's some sort of cream cheese chimichurri. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful. It was a poblano cream cheese with chimichurri. Corn cake with pork with some some sort of salsa verde on top. And then what is the sauce? I think it's an avocado cream. Mmm. That's good. Yeah. The yep. cheese bread is better. Yep, I agree. Some of this avocado cream right here. It's also a little cold. Well, that's annoying. It is though, you're right. <laughs> it's annoying that it's not piping hot since we waited half an hour for it. But um, it's, it's tasty, it's just not as good as the cheese bread. Yeah. We got the noodles. Cheese mm. look and smell incredible. Okay. I can't say that I've ever tried to eat noodles on camera before, so this could be... Interesting. Really not... You know, try a piece of chicken. These are not, this is not a first date food. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Did you get through that? Really fantastic flavor. Not too spicy. That is not cold. <laughs> no. That is very warm. And it's delicious. Delicious. So the noodle bowl comes out with chicken and um, tofu. You can, get you, it, yeah, you, can, you can get it with yeah. one or the other, but it's made with both. It's supposed to come with both. So that's fabulous. Oh, Very such good fresh, flavor. good flavor. It's great. And hot. Hot. So we got the congaloosh. Um, apparently, this is the most popular dessert on the menu. Oh. So it's a chocolate cake, which is very firm. She did say dense. It's got like a coffee sorbet, coffee, they call it coffee dust on top. That is whipped cream. Mmm. It is definitely dense. Very rich. <laughs> it actually reminds me of those little Debbie yes, brownies, the brownies that were like <laughs> a quarter inch thick that were just super, super dense. Yes. That's exactly what it reminds me of. So, we'll wrap this up at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, we are back after a literal two and a half mile walk from the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, we decided we had a little bit of time before we had to go get Jennings from school, so we actually took the walkway from Magic Kingdom to the Grand Floridian. We yes. walked around in there and got to see all of the um, chocolate Easter eggs that they're decorated. They are super cute. Shall we get to Skipper Canteen? Yes. First things first, um, ambiance and theming. What did you think? Okay, the ambiance and theming is 
fantastic. So from the skippers telling the jokes to the names of the items on the menu to all of the decor and the whole place, it just, um, they really, it, they don't ever break character either. I mean, sh they very much throughout kept up their little jokes and and the little shtick that they've got going on there. It very much is like like they just stepped off the boat and came to the restaurant and were welcoming you into their little um, home, I guess. Yeah. And the decorations around the restaurant are really, really good. It's situated really well in Adventureland. So if you're going from the hub through Adventureland, you go under the sign. Um, it's right there on the right, I think four and a half. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so service. Um, so there was a couple of hiccups in service, um, but they did recover pretty well. The appetizers were pretty delayed. So we ordered the drink first, it came out right away. We ordered the drink and the appetizers at the same time. The drink came out within like two minutes. It was very fast. Yeah. Um, the appetizers, it was like half an hour. Yeah, so it was fairly long. Um, the little cheese balls, those were fantastic and hot and very delicious. And then the um, the other thing, the cachapas, cachapas, that they were kind of cold. And so whenever she came to check on us to see how we liked it, we just mentioned like, these were wonderful, but this was a little bit cold. We weren't complaining, she, no. she asked, and so we were honest. Yeah, and uh, she, I guess, told somebody else, a manager came over and apologized for them being cold. They off, both of them offered for them to be remade. We were like, no, we don't need them remade. Like, they were fine, they tasted good, they were just a little cold, and they took it off of our ticket. I, I don't think I could, I could give them above a four because they did have those hiccups, but they recovered quite well. Yeah. So I think a four is so warranted. It was better than average. It's better than average. I mean, everybody yeah. makes mistakes and they, they covered up for it. So um, I was pleased with that. I, yeah. was, I thought it was very, um, you know, it was what they did was great. So drinks. Um, so we did just get the one non-alcoholic specialty drink of the, the Adventureland Colada, which was delicious. Um, but I think we decided that, well, because this is in Magic Kingdom, there's no specialty cocktails per se, there's only wine and beer, and then there's like a, a sangria, and then like a beer cocktail. I don't think you can give a restaurant that doesn't have a full bar the highest marks for drinks. Right. I mean. so, so we decided that we would go a little above average, so we're gonna give it a three and a half for that. Yeah, I mean the Dole Whip drink, it was blended it was really Dole good. Whip, um, passion fruit, and coconut. It was very tasty. That was like their one specialty non-beer wine thing. Um, highly recommend it. Um, the kids would love it if you, I mean, our kids would love it. All right, the food. Food was, some things were amazing and some things were okay. Okay. So for the appetizer, we got two appetizers, one entree, one dessert, um, just because we were, we would have, we couldn't have even come close <laughs> to eating all that food if we had got That's any more than that. She said the most popular on menu appetizer was the Noco Aida's Cachapas. It's a corn cake with pulled pork and like this, um, Salsa verde on top with like an avocado crema that you can put on if you want. Mm -hmm. The flavor was good, but the pork was cold. The cheese bread was amazing. It was amazing. And it, so this is the secret menu item. I would highly recommend them. Um, I could have eaten them as my meal. Pau de queijo. Q-U-E-J-O. It's like queso, but with a J. <laughs> Um, and then she recommended several items on the main entree. So she actually recommended the short rib, the steak, the um, sustainable fish, which today it was striped bass, and the um, Thai noodles. So we went ahead and got that and I am so glad we did. Yeah. It was done so she well. She said that if you wanted something with a kick, you should get the Thai noodles, which is another reason why we got it. The uh, dessert was the Kungaloosh. She said that was the most popular. Kungaloosh. It was not that good. <laughs> it was okay. So uh, you compared it in the restaurant to the little uh, dense, little Debbie brownies that you can get. That are like this thick. And it, it was, I mean, it was probably a little thicker than that, but it was very, very dense. Yeah, it was um, that density. It sounded in the description like there was gonna be this like explosion of all these different flavors. And I didn't really get that. Like uh, the ice cream, I didn't get the cashew caramel flavor with the coffee dust on top. Like I, I didn't get all of that. My favorite 
combination was whenever I grabbed a little bit of banana with the chocolate cake and a little bit of ice cream. That was my favorite combo taste. But so, I mean, it was okay. Like it was good. I, I ate know. it. I wouldn't get it again. <laughs> so I think we came up with a four on food. Yeah. I think so. So, I mean, if you add that all together, I think overall we gave it a four, which I'm a little surprised at um, that it came out so high because this has not been one of those restaurants that I feel like is on everyone's radar. And so for it to have rated as high as it did, like, I think it's a pretty good pick. Yeah, um, this is definitely a great option if you're going to Magic Kingdom. It's also very available. So if you forget to make ADRs or you can't find what you want, like you really want Cinderella's Royal Table or whatever, this is a great option. It I mean, really is. it does have some different things in there, but honestly, even like we, for two of us, we were full leaving there. Mm -hmm. We could have definitely done without either an appetizer or that drink or that dessert and still been very comfortable sharing an entree. And we probably would have had we been going in not with the intention of the, the review. Probably. We probably would have gotten a appetizer, maybe two, and then an entree, and that would have been good. But it was very reasonably priced. It was super, yeah, this was probably the cheapest um, dining review that we've done. I gave that waitress over 30% tip because they did the whole credit on the on the pork things, even though you know we ate it, and, and it was 70 bucks with, I mean, a, a pretty substantial tip on yeah. there. And we got two appetizers, an entree, a dessert, and a specialty drink that was very, very filling. So I think it's a very good option. Yeah, yeah, I think it's I fantastic. I recommend it, four. Yeah, Four absolutely. out of five, that's great. That's way above average. Absolutely. So, um, <laughs> anyway, I think that's it. Yeah, I think so. So I guess until next time. All right, we will see you on the next video.